Hello guys, how are you all, welcome back to my channel, so, today we are gonna see, what if Naruto had memories and powers of greatest dead Kaiubi, part 1, subscribe if you enjoy the video, and also check the description, so let's begin the story. If there ever was a clash of the titans, it was in Konoha. For seven days and seven nights a demon laid siege on the walls of the village hidden in the leaves. Kaiubi, the terror king himself attacked Konoha after rising from the depths of Makai with his eight clansmen, who each went to attack a portion of the shinobi-infested world. Under his hellfire, the vast population of Konoha was slain, and the dwindling shinobi that were left took up arms against the juggernaut of the demon, and even with their combined forces, nothing could stop his terrorizing raids. However, that all stopped when Yandane, himself, rode in on his trusted summon Gamabunta, the King Toad. Even though he was the only man who had ever been considered an equal to the fabled Professor Sandane by his fellow shinobi, he could not defeat this demon. Their battle shook the land, and the vast forest surrounding the once lush land was now either in flames from Kaiubi's hell torrents or charred after fire was extinguished by Gamabunta. Finally on the seventh day after much blood, sweat, and tears, the Yandane caved into his darkest fear, attaching the very soul of the fox to the innocent soul of a child. Deep inside Yandane knew that Kanoha wouldn't respect his wishes, much like Orochimaru didn't honor Suratobi's wish from him to Hokage, rather than the former student, and blame the innocent child for the loss in this battle. Truly this child was being punished more than Kaiubi himself, so Yandame altered the seal. There was no true way to kill that which is already dead, so Yandame figured a way to send Kaiubi back from which it came, but not before leaving something precious to him. All the chakra of a village or even the world was going to be locked within this child, as some sort of divine intervention from karma. Kaiubi was going to live an afterlife tortured by those he had tortured while in power, and this child was going to live a tortured life for holding his demonic essence from the said demon lord. However, it was for a good cause because without his chakra, the Kaiubi couldn't return to the human world, or at least not anytime soon. It was better than the alternative Yandane concluded as he finished this new seal. At least the child would be able to protect himself if the villagers ever felt too out of line, and Kaiubi would get what he so rightfully deserved in the end, and with those thoughts Yandane charged with child in hand, and sealed the world's greatest menace into a child. Seven years later, he had that dream again. Just like before, Naruto relived the last thoughts of the man who had sealed him with his cursed blessing. Bittersweet really, because without the man's kindness he wouldn't be here right now, after a villager lost himself to his hatred and attacked him disguised as the old man. It had all started when he had come home after being attacked again and the grocery store, and after returning to his rundown apartment after paying double the price for spoiled goods, Naruto noticed his door was unlocked. So hiding his food he waited for the man to jump out. Thinking, it'll all be over soon, and if I don't move, maybe he'll leave my food alone thinking I'm dead, but when the door squeaked open, Naruto saw only his most trusted person on this planet, Sandame Suratobi. After some small chit chat Naruto found something was off, and that's when the impostor sprung his trap, and in one quick motion, Naruto's neck was slit, and all he heard was, you deserve this before he fell back. However, death never came, nor did the cold ground for as soon as Naruto started to topple backward, something snapped inside of him. More precisely, the protectorate seal around Kaiubi's pent-up chakra slipped to save his life, and now before the world stood the sole proprietor of the Biju King Kaiubi chakra. It wasn't long before Anbu showed up, albeit late as hell after discovering the location of the chakra spike, but they arrived at the scene of the attempted murder, only to see Naruto standing over a sniveling man. Even with the mass killing intent radiating off his body, the child stood completely calm and totally curious of what was happening. Within the hour, the man was sent to the psychiatric ward to be analyzed for any mental affliction, before being prosecuted for attempted murder, even with most of Kanoha going against his case, stating something along the lines of, he was probably attacked, but with Saratobi's urging or a threatening, he was prosecuted and found it guilty, but was released under the claims of being mentally insane. Iwubi's or rather Naruto chakra broke the man's psyche, and he was now spending the rest of his days in a padded white room, replaying the shock of having the equivalent of a holocaust victim's hatred for his torments going off in his mind after being multiplied 1000 times over. Well revenge is a dish best served cold they always said, and this guy was going to spend his whole life over this cold heaping of hate in front of him. But even with that problem solved, the aftermath from it sprouted more problems and more grievous problems than the last. What will Naruto do now that he had access to the greatest source of power on this planet, and how would the villagers react now that he held the power of their most hated foe, and the most disturbing of all was would he help the village that constantly held a knife to his throat and be their loyal protector or would he turn his back on the village that shunned him like Orochimaru did years before. 
Sandane found himself in the proverbial pickle and now had to make a choice. Either let Naruto be and watch the boy struggle from afar before he either killed himself in the village from the immense backlash that Kyuubi's chakra would have sent out when released or watch him turn his back on the village before swearing annihilation on all of its inhabitants. Therefore, Sandane made a third choice and broke his own oath to never train another student. So Sandane gathered his almost infinite resources and got the boy a well-secure home and began teaching him basic chakra control. It wasn't long after that did the, for lack of a better term, dreams start. It was like watching a movie and remembering parts you have never seen. They looked so familiar and yet Naruto had no memory of ever being in the place he saw, which usually was centered on a land with red skies and large old Japanese castles. After telling the Saratobi of his dreams, the man immediately told him to tell no one else, thinking of the horrors that the villagers would do to the child if they found out he could remember what Kaiubi had done while still breathing. Standing by his oath, Naruto trained vigorously until his seventh birthday when he convinced the Hokage to let him become a shinobi. It was both a joyous and painful thing for the elder man because Naruto would be swearing his loyalty to this village, but then he was reminded of his other apprentice. Orochimaru was once loyal, but power soon corrupted him, and he turned his back on the village, so the question was, would Naruto do the same? Shaking his fears away, Saratobi remembered it was Naruto's choice, and holding him back would only hurt the boy's trust in him, so the Sandane let Naruto join. So this is where Naruto found himself after his little daydream in the past few years in a classroom with people he had only met the day prior. His training with the Hokage forced the lonely boy to grow up fast and behind his cheery attitude to throw the villagers off their tracks and show them that they could break him was a boy who analyzed every situation as if his life depended on it. So here he finds himself going over his mental notes he had taken on everyone around him. First was the pink-haired girl who was in front of him. Haruno Sakura, preteen girl with preteen fantasies on the village heartthrob. After only one day Naruto made a conclusion about her, stay away. Not that the girl was ugly or anything, on the contrary she was quite cute and would be a beauty one day, but her helpless infatuation with a certain boy would only slow him down. Aside from her open love life, Sakura seemed like she would make an excellent kinoichi if she paid more attention to her training than boys, but then again she was only preteen girl like Yamanaka Ino, the second person who caught his eye in the class, blonde like him, the pretty girl would be simply stunning like Sakura, but she also fell under the category of do not pursue, seeing as she too was smitten by a certain male. Unlike her friend, who had kind eyes, Ino had a calculating brain like all the seers in her family of psychic shinobi. From his intel from the Sandane, Ino may very well be the strongest kanoichi of her generation at the time, and the look in her eyes didn't dissuade that notion. Moving on, Naruto's eyes fell on the last female of his class, Hayuga Hinata. The cute girl was pitifully shy, but under her shaking voice and uncertain eyes was that of a true beauty like the other Kinoichi noted before, and being the heir to the Hayuga household and fearsome by Akigen, it was ironic that she was shy and uncertain, unlike her prideful clansmen. It was that trait that made her stand out, and from what Naruto discovered from previous meeting with the Hayuga household, that the smug clan was by far some of the most intolerable people he had ever met. Hinata was different though, she didn't have her eyes on preteen boys like the other girls, but instead they were on the ground. Given her heritage she could be the strongest academy student if she would come out of her shell a little, and maybe even the strongest genin given her parentage, but fate was cruel. Moving his eyes from the girl beside him, Naruto looked onto the male population of the class, starting with the sleeping child beside him. Nara Shikamaru was a lazy bum at first glance, but as Naruto observed him longer, he noticed that the true reason he came off like that was because he was just not motivated to pursue this career. The most ironic part about it was that underneath the lazy cover was a true shinobi genius just waiting to come out, but too bad if he was too lazy to dig it out. Moving on to the slightly larger child beside him, Naruto rested his gaze on Akamichi Chaoji. The class fady was far from the glutton he made himself out to be sorta. He was an Akamichi and with that came the burden of being larger than everyone else, but with it came his true size advantage. Within him came the potential to be the strongest genin, physically, in the whole class, and if he ever grew over his self-conscious problems, he would truly be a deadly force. Looking up, Naruto's gaze landed on the class's animal lover, Inuzuka Kiba. The class clown and animal lover was a true beast on the inside, and his tajutsu showed it. During the classroom spar, he crushed a no-name kid within seconds using his clan's techniques and gloated about it afterward, reducing the boy to tears. His pride would be his downfall, but if he survived that encounter, Kiba would become a true shinobi down to the core, and with his loss of pride, he would be a valuable asset to the village. Next was Aburam Shino, quiet as a mouse, but had an aura of the strong silent type. 
he was quiet, conserved, and calculating like most trained shinobi, and could be a bingo book candidate in time, but his only downfall was his isolation, and other than that there was not much Naruto could say about him. Moving his gaze to the last person on his list of standout faces was the village tragedy story and heart Rabicha Sasuke. Not only was he the only heir, he was cocky, but Naruto had to give it to him, he had been in the first place so long that he could be, but Naruto was here to change that. Ichiha Sasuke just made a rival, and his name was Uzumaki Naruto Yamino Aruka as he called it. The man's expression changed to one of hatred as he called the name, but Naruto wasn't affected, he had far better things to do than worry about those who had nothing but hate for him. Here was the boy's nonchalant reply as class started. Naruto sat in the back of the classroom out of habit, and because the elevated view provided the best spot to collect intel, not only from his sensei, but from his classmates as well. Even before he got settled in, the boy's danger sense, which he had grown over the years to test a person's tolerance level for him, was going off a mile a minute. Smoothing the invisible creases in his deep blue pants, Naruto felt his black shirt growing incredibly hot under the teacher's gaze. Shifting his blue vest over his black shirt, Naruto tried to play off his nervousness to the unbearable imaginary heat. The class rolled on like usual, and Yuzumaki found himself victim to Aruka's deep resentment. Apparently the young man had lost his parents to the Kaiubi attack, leaving him orphaned. The young Chuanin was a bit more than bitter that Naruto, or more exactly, the Kaiubi vessel, was favored by the Hokage himself, rather than left out in the cold like all the other orphans. Throughout most of the dry history lesson, Haruka made periodic attacks at Naruto's intellect, with questions far above an academy student's level. The class, who was usually asleep by now, was fully aware of the battle of wills going on between the new kid and their sensei. After answering a particularly difficult question, Naruto silently thanked Sandane for pounding into his head that this was the age of espionage warfare, and information was the sharpest sword. Naruka was stumped after a mental game of cat and mouse, so the older man decided that he would just quit trying to defeat the child mentally and go on to the physical level, because there hadn't been anyone in the last half decade that was this well informed in the mind and gifted on the battlefield. So after filing the children out of the class, Iruka made his way down to the training patch and started the exercises. It was simple, the children would work on the basics, and Iruka, as their sensei, would point out their mistakes if any. However, the one child that he wanted to humiliate proved to be a prodigy in the works. Even though Naruto studied under the Hokage, in both chakra control and all the information a child could possibly need in shinobi life, Naruto was never taught anything that he could physically use in combat. Maybe because of the deep guilt that Siratobi had buried in his heart over his estranged pupil, or if the older man didn't want to tempt Naruto to follow the said student's fall from favor, but all the sand aim armed Naruto with was a quick wit and understanding of chakra, and from there, it was up to Naruto. So needless to say that Naruto was not the sharpest shot with a kunai, unlike the Ichiha prodigy. Haruka wasted no time to point out Naruto's mistakes in a rather loud manner. After a bit of teasing at the blonde's expense, Naruto corrected his hold on the kunai, and within a few tries, his accuracy was steadily catching up with the class star. The jutsu wasn't any better than accuracy training. His stance was poor, and compared to the prowess of the more gifted students, Kiba, Sasuke, Shino, and Chaoji, Naruto's abilities weren't nearly up to par. This was painfully made apparent to Naruto when the Akamichi male almost pounded Naruto's head into the hard earth with his Buban bike and no jutsu, partial multi-size fist. For the duration of the fight Naruto was either using his speed advantage to land sloppy blows to the larger boy or use his agility to dodge the earth moving punches. Either way Naruto couldn't win the fight, only to hope for a draw at best. Watching the blonde, Iruka couldn't help but feel a little bit guilty. He had pitted the boy against a student who had a distinct advantage. Unlike Chaoji, Sasuke, Kiba, Shino, or any other student for that matter, Naruto did not have parents, or in one case a high-class scroll, to teach him the finer points to jutsu, Naruto instead stopped dodging and let out a breath, as he was already formulating a plan. Old man always said that the chain is only as strong as its weakest link, and right now I have two. The accuracy can be solved with more practice, but the tojutsu will need some guidance. But who will teach me? old man is out, and besides him I really don't have any other options. I could try to, but before Naruto's mind could pull together a plan, Iruka decided to end today's lesson with an ninjutsu test. Since Asuk was last the day before, it was Naruto's turn to go first. Blinking in surprise as Naruto's thoughts focused on the task at hand, the boy walked toward the stationary training logs that had been battered by Chaoji, slashed by Kiba, turned to sawdust by Shino courtesy of the insects, and burned to a crisp by the Ichiha savior of course. Walking up to a less battered post Naruto could hear the other students in the background. Ignoring the other students' whispers, Naruto focused his chakra into the only gift that he had received in his life. A chakra pentacle used by his father as a good luck charm was the only thing that Naruto received out of an act of kindness. 
Sandane had been the one to give the gift and was also left with the burden and responsibility of telling the boy the truth, the truth that he was the son of the late Yandane. Unlike the Saratobi head's prediction, Naruto didn't go on a bloody rampage and kill countless Konoha citizens for their acts against him, but instead the boy thanked him for not keeping the truth from him. It appeared as though the incident had brought more than just a physical change to the child, Naruto had mentally matured for more than any child his age as well. To him, if this village meant enough to his father for him to give his only born son for its protection, then that was more than enough for him to try and follow in the same footsteps. So now Naruto stood before his classmates holding the five-pointed amulet, focusing his chakra into it. Poisoning his arm forwards, Naruto said aloud, I will only say this once so pay attention, this is my chakra saku, chakra weaver and, with that a long extension of chakra shot out from each of the five points on the pentacle. 1, Chakra Shaku. Dejeki, Chakra Weaver. Strike Naruto said as he dashed towards the wooden post. The wisps of chakra that formed from around the pentacle's point closed around Naruto's clenched fist before he made contact with the wood. The log's top was ripped from the ground by the punch that had left the bottom in a perfect flat edge. As the log flew backwards, Naruto gathered his chakra towards the center of the chakra shaku before saying, 2, chakra shaku. Tama, chakra weaver. Shata, built up chakra released in a solid burst, flying straight through the log before releasing a shockwave that literally broke down the larger portion of the log, before firing it back at Naruto. The children surrounding Naruto watched in awe and shock, as the new kids just destroyed a 200-pound training post. The most affected was none other than Ichiha Sasuke himself. How does he just come up and pass me like that? I'm an Ichiha, Kanoha's elite, the strongest. How? How is he so much like but, before Sasu could finish his thoughts they were cut off by the sound of Naruto being bombarded by the shrapnel from the destroyed log. Iruka was about to jump in and protect Naruto, but it seemed that the younger boy already had it covered. Letting the compressed chakra in the center of his chakra shaku flow outward, Naruto redistributed his energies throughout the pentacle. Linking the edges of his chakra beams, Naruto spread the chakra in a thick sheet across the connected pentagon. Chakra shaku. Tate, Chakra Weaver. Shield was all Naruto said as the pieces of wood collided with the shield before being disintegrated by the dot dropping his throbbing hand, Naruto smirked as he looked at the Ichiha. It was worth it, knocking that arrogant smile off his face Naruto thought to himself, as he bit back the urge to hold his chakra burned arm. The three moves, each inspired by Kanoha's three sanin, Chakra Shaku. Dejeki was from Sandame's stories of Tsunade and her monster strength, and after hearing how much the abilities help or hurt them, Naruto knew that he had to make his own version. The Chakra Shaku. Tate was inspired by Jiraiya and his uncanny ability to make his hair into a living shield, and after being at the receiving end of the villagers' mistreatment, Naruto figured it would be wise to develop a defense. Last, the Chakra Shaku. Tama was inspired by the last Sanin, Arachimaru. Even though he is Konoha's greatest villain, Ichiha Itachi being a close second, he was by far the greatest ninjutsu user the village had ever seen. For instance, his Senajashu, hidden shadow snake hands, had killed masses of shinobi, both of Konoha and other villages, without them coming within three meters of his body. So why have the idea of leaving the superior ranged out of your arsenal, just because it reminds you of your enemy? But these techniques didn't come without a price, and seeing as Naruto was nowhere near the skill level of any of the three, he paid a steep price. When used back to back, they channeled so much chakra through Naruto's arm that he wouldn't be able to use the arm again until the ruptured healed, which was normally a day or so, thanks to the regenerative powers Kyuubi's chakra had left him with. Walking right past the Ichiha and making sure to keep his tender arm as still as possible, Naruto met eyes with him for a slip second to tell him that the bet was on, before joining back with the class without waiting for his reply. Needless to say that infuriated Sasuke, along with his groupies, and just made Naruto somewhat of a hero to the male population of the class. Now Naruto went from being the new kid to being the cool kid. Therefore, for the rest of the class he was pestered with questions like, can you teach me? No was the answer he gave each time, and like all the others they left him labeling the boy as an idiot. So the class fell back into a normal atmosphere. Now that Sasuke was glaring daggers at Naruto, instantly making him evil incarnate in the majority of the female class's book, and as for the boys, only those who didn't care about being a ninja, or those who just didn't find his abilities a threat to them, tolerated the boy. The rest just didn't want anything to do with him after he wouldn't let them in on his dot. Class ended without anyone attacking Naruto out of anger, and Naruka held Naruto back as the class left. The ones Naruto labeled his tolerables lifted an eyebrow to Naruto before leaving. Turning to face Aruka, Naruto prepared himself for a verbal assault on where he learned the ore that they had there on him, the demon spawn. But to his surprise Aruka simply bowed, before saying, I'd like to apologize for my behavior earlier. 
even though Hokage-sama had told the village there was no reason to fear you, but sometimes it takes falling on your face to see what's right in front of you. Looking up Aruka could make out a little behind Naruto's usual happy mask and see the shock on the lonely boy. The world had dealt a harder blow to the boy in front of him than himself. Seeing as Aruka had known his parents for a while and was just ignored by the villagers, Naruto never met either of his parents and was known as Konoha's demon. Needless to say that Naruto was shocked, but he hid it behind his smiling mask. Aruka could see small segments of the boy who put on a face for the village and felt even worse. Therefore, doing what he always did when he was feeling down, he decided to go for Raymon. Inviting Naruto to come with him, Aruka didn't expect Naruto to reply hastily. Of course Aruka-sensei the boy yelled, dropping his mask, but with as quick as it fell it was back in place, and the only proof that it even felt was the red tinge on Naruto's cheeks. Following Aruka out of the class, Naruto couldn't help but feel the villagers' eyes on him, but he persevered. Arriving at the Raymond stand, Naruto wasted no time in robbing Aruka of his weekly pay. Grimacing at his growing financial problems, Aruka tried to make some small talk to take his mind off of the thought of bread and water for a week. So Naruto, how did you get so good at ninjutsu? Come to think of it, you did use hand seals to activate your, how did you do that Aruka asked, but immediately regretted it when he saw Naruto's expression change. So he didn't want to be my friend after all Naruto thought sadly as his eyes drooped. Looking in retrospect, Aruka was mentally handing him to himself when Naruto abruptly turned his gaze to the man. All thoughts of comforting his estranged student vanished from his eyes under the boy's gaze. It was like fire burning, all-consuming, and eventually the boy's eye smothered Aruka under its anger. Only when Aruka felt the full crushing weight of his mistake was when Naruto decided to leave. Naruto, who had been forced to run for his life over the years that he grew up, had developed a sixth sense. It, or rather his chakra, flooded the area keeping a constant check of the surroundings and alerted Naruto if anything, other chakra presences and killing intent entered the area. Combine it with his anger, and the effect was increased tenfold. And for once the villagers or self righteous shinobi didn't bother Naruto, because of one frightening fact Kaiubi's or rather Naruto chakra was boiling over and spilling over into the surrounding area. The usual sedated presence of his chakra was almost lashing out on the surroundings, as if it were trying to let out some of the anger raging inside its host. Walking the dank alleys of Kanoha to avoid hurting any of the citizens of the village and reaffirming their belief that he was the demon seed, Naruto grew increasingly irritated at the presence following him. Thinking the mystery man was Aruka, Naruto lashed out with his chakra shaku, not caring that his arm was screaming bloody murder as his chakra shot through it. Loading a powerful chakra shaku. Tama that was aimed slightly to the side so that it would just scare Aruka off rather than obliterate his body, however, to his surprise when Naruto made eye contact with Aruka, it wasn't Aruka at all. For that matter, it wasn't a man at all. Before him stood the timid Hayuga Hinata who always had her eyes on the ground. Calming his nerves, Naruto disassembled his chakra shaku and lowered his arm. Clutching the throbbing arm, Naruto mentally berated himself while holding the demonic chakra at bay. Last thing I need is the Hayuga in my foot for harming their air Naruto told himself, while thinking of the consequences of Hinata seeing Kaiubi's imprisoned chakra. Hinata took a few hesitant steps to the wounded boy, hoping to soothe him and maybe convince him to help her. She was weak, that much she admitted to herself, but she was tired of hearing it from her family. She was tired of seeing the disappointment in her father's eyes, and she was tired of seeing herself alone. Not stopping when Naruto's piercing cat-like gaze met hers or when the feral growl he let out as a warning for her to stop, Hinata slowly reached into her pouch and careful not to make any sudden movements, pulled out the healing salve. Specifically made by the Hyuga clan, the salve could heal ruptured at a remarkable pace, which was needed because more often than not, an advanced Jayuikan technique would almost destroy the chakra holes beyond human repair. Rubbing the cream onto the painted skin, Hinata felt Naruto calm down while the cool goo did its work. Uttering a thanks, Naruto quickly backed away and was about to leave when he heard Hinata's voice. Wait the girl said, trying her best not to stutter. Standing straight and tall she looked into Naruto's curious eyes before speaking. I'm Hayuga Hinata, heir to the Hayuga clan Naruto simply nodded and was about to take his leave when he was stopped again. And I wanted to know if you would and thinking that it would be just like before Naruto was about to snap when he heard Hinata finish. If you'd be my friend and with that, the shy Hinata's words were out in the open and a confused Naruto was left in front of them. The anger seemingly vanished and looked into the girl's eyes. Watching her even turn her gaze was all the confirmation Naruto needed to know that her offer was genuine. It baffled Naruto to think that the Hayuga heir wanted him as a friend, but after seeing the look in her eye, Naruto's soul instantly connected with hers. She knew the pains of being ostracized because of her birth. Unlike him though, she was expected to be the greatest the village had to offer, while he was expected to betray them in a cold, demonic fury. 
they both failed to realize that expectation and were persecuted for it, and it was at that moment that Naruto made the connection, and with that sudden epiphany Naruto thought, maybe having a friend is better after all. Naruto was about to tell Hinata of his decision, when the long silence became too much for the girl and, with shimmering eyes, she was about to make a break for it when Naruto said, I guess having a friend won't be too bad. Looking up, Hinata saw past the bad sarcasm and saw behind the smiling mask that Naruto put on for the sake of the village. Looking at the softly smiling boy, she smiled too, and that was the start of a lifelong friendship. It's been five years Naruto thought to himself while he sparred with Hinata. Time sure has flown the boy thought to himself while weaving through Hinata's deadly and accurate Jayuikin, gentle fist, strikes. Looking at the determined look on the girl's face, Naruto couldn't help but let his mind wander. Funny how five years ago, Hinata was too scared to even think about having that type of look on her face Naruto said to himself, while holding back a laugh, which came out more like a sort of strangled chuckle, which in turn only served to deepen the scold-like look on the girl's face, causing her to redouble her efforts. Much had changed in the five years after the faithful night that Naruto made his first friend, and as cliched as it sounds, Naruto's life seemed to brighten from that point on. Even with all the drama he went through inside and outside of the academy, ignoring both the ignorant villagers who couldn't see his pain and Naruka's attempts to befriend him. Naruto soon found himself spending most of his free time with Hinata just exploring the town, and like a good friend, Naruto found out that Hinata was having trouble at home because they thought she was too weak, so Naruto decided that they could train together so that way, everyone would benefit. What seemed like a good idea at the time turned out to be a horrible idea, at least in Naruto's opinion, when he finally got Hinata to let out her inner shinobi after a speech that slapped some sense into the kind-hearted girl. This isn't a game Hinata. You, your comrades, and your village could all be lost if you don't have the resolve needed to do what you have to. Yes it is good to be kind, but there is a time and place for all things, and the battlefield isn't a place to be kind. So you have to make a choice. Either give up on being a shinobi or harden your resolve and show me what you can do. Those were Naruto's exact words on that day Hinata finally stopped hiding behind her own inferiority complex and let her real self shine after that. From that point on, it had only been uphill for the girl. With Naruto's help, she was able to master the Jayuikin she had been taught, and with the help of the closet prankster, she was able to steal some of the more advanced Jayuikin scrolls without the main family finding out. Taking a note from her partner's playbook, Hinata decided to work on her own techniques instead of basing her whole arsenal solely on just what she was taught. Researching everything on chakra that she could find, Hinata couldn't find any inspiration for a new one until she saw Naruto use his chakra. It wasn't the chakra shaku or its variations that caught her eye, but the way his chakra seemed to constantly overflow from his body and act as an early warning system. From there on, it was a domino effect as Hinata figured out a way to release her chakra in a similar field that surrounded her hands. The field acted like her personal Jayuikin amplifier, and the results from her first test were shocking. In a family spar, Hinata used the amplifier on every finger and was able to effectively use Jayuikin from all of her fingers and close with the slightest touch. Needless to say, Hanabi was quickly defeated with the newly dubbed Jayudasaki, gentle fingers, and the turmoil growing in the Hayuga household subsided for now at least. Naruto, on the other hand, got more than he originally thought he would get out of this friendship. Hinata, being the friend that she was, taught Naruto some of the basics to a good tojutsu form like a stable base and hands in a ready position, but Naruto refused to learn Jayuikin when the girl offered saying, Jayuikin is your family tojutsu, and I doubt I'm ready to join your family Hinata. The mere implication left Naruto smirking and Hinata beat red before the girl got Naruto back by closing a few well-placed points, freezing the boy right where he was standing. From the hints that Hinata gave, Naruto used what he was naturally given to form his own tojutsu style that, much to his surprise, came out to be a lot like the Hayuga's Jayuikin. But unlike the Hayuga's, Naruto didn't have the Byakugan, so he used his overflowing chakra as a screen that reacts to both chakra and killing intent inside its head area. Using this screen, Naruto was able to strike using the overflowing chakra to coat each of his blows. When used, it had a few surprising effects. One being able to distort anyone trying to mold their chakra when his chakra coated fist came too close to chakra trying to mold. This had a particularly vexing effect on Hinata, who found it increasingly harder to use her family's tojutsu when Naruto could just cancel it out by simply bringing his fist near hers. The other effect was rather cool, or so Naruto thought. Because it was his chakra that was constantly flooding the area around him, Naruto had limited control over his natural chakra element in the area, or specifically the air that was in his chakra's territory. After a little practice Naruto was able to make air strikes in the area without molding the Junshu chakra, territory chakra, but just guiding it with something like a kick or punch. It went extremely well with Naruto's new tojutsu form which he named Haki. Kenshiken, 8 divinations. Striking fist, after its parent style Haki. Jayuken. 
Nevertheless, true to his kitsune nature due to the after effects of his binding to Kaiubi's chakra, Naruto developed a way to mold his overflowing chakra, Junshu chakra, so that it could cover the area with a dot. After that same development, Naruto began to work with the field until he was actively able to disguise the whole area with regular bunshin, which in turn stopped Mizuki from embarrassing him in class because he couldn't compress his chakra into a bunshin. Back to the ongoing duel with Hinata, Naruto found himself being pummeled by Hinata's Jayudasaki and used his haki. Kenshiken to distort her closing attacks before hitting her with a double-handed open palm strike and then used his Junshu chakra to push the girl back and stun her for a second with a mass amount chakra overflowing her system. Watching the girl lose control of her chakra within seconds, Naruto sent a pulse through his Junshu chakra, effectively blinding the girl's Byakugan before making a hasty retreat. Shaking the spot from her eyes, Hinata looked around for Naruto before swearing silently when she could find him. All-out assault is the only way I can beat Naruto Hinata thought to herself before scanning the area for Naruto. Originally Naruto's Junshu chakra proved to be more of a hindrance when fighting Hinata's, because even with all of its benefits, it was like a homing beacon for Hinata's eyes to zone in on. In order to counter that, Naruto began experimenting on ways to make his constantly overflowing chakra less noticeable. In the end he began to let the chakra blend with the natural chakra that every living thing gives off. What started as a hindrance is now an effective weapon against all. Naruto could now almost completely hide his presence to the Byakugan, and if Inada got too close to beating him, he could flare up his Junshu chakra and blind the girl while making a quick escape to regroup. Watching from the Byaki blaring his Junshu chakra and blinding the girl before molding the surrounding chakra into an area affecting Dot. Inada was surrounded by darkness, and knowing Naruto, he probably had double layered them so that everyone on the outside would only see the trees surrounding them. Stealing herself, Hinata bought some time for herself by saying, Dirty trick Naruto, I swear if I find you I'll show you how much Jayuken can hurt. Dot waiting for Naruto to reply, hoping his voice would give away his location. Come on Hinata, you can do better than that Naruto said, but to Hinata's dismay, his voice came from every direction. Scrunching her face, Hinata used her chakra like Naruto's Junshu chakra in hopes that she could dodge his attack. But right as Naruto entered her small zone, she knew he was moving too fast for her to counter or dodge. Expelling chakra from her body, Hinata made a silent bow to finish learning Katen to stop something like this from ever happening again when Naruto suddenly stopped. With his illusion wavering, Naruto had little time to bring up a pulse in his Junshu chakra to blind Hinata so he could make a clean getaway before a heavy pressure gripped his head. It was like someone had his mind in a vice grip. It didn't take long for Naruto to figure out who it was, and when the realization dawned on him, he muttered a mental, Eno in a pain-filled voice before he heard, the one and only, as the pressure doubled. Watching as he fell, Naruto looked at the last member of his opponent's team, and was pissed to see that the pink-haired girl was able to crack him in such a short time. The two girls had originally sworn not to talk to Naruto, but after hearing only good praise from Hinata, and seeing how much the girl had grown, they revised their earlier verdict. Both came to Naruto and Hinata's little sparring group in hopes to get stronger and maybe catch Sasuke's eye, but that soon changed when they found themselves too tired to even think about the boy. Within the first week, they both were wearing weights like their two friends and actively participating in new methods to use their chakra to suit their needs. Sakura, with her near-perfect control, quickly picked up some of the she had gotten from Hinata, who in turn swiped them from the Hyuga library while she got the advanced Jayuken scrolls. The only thing keeping her from using them were her small reserves, so Naruto took it upon himself to raise everyone's reserves including his own. This led to them doing a set of brutal water walking and tree climbing drills that not only raised their chakra reserves, but also their stamina. Now the drills were used as a warm-up for the day, and Sakura had more than enough chakra to use the more advanced dot. Ino on the other hand, stuck with her family but used them in more inventive ways. With increased reserves and control over her chakra, Ino began experimenting with different ways to use her mind-related dot. The result was the ability to create a link with anyone within her target range that couldn't put up a barrier to block her probing. The Amoy Burichi, mind bridge, allowed her access to another person's mind with her leaving her body, but it sacrificed her ability to actively control someone. So instead she fell back on her psychology classes with her father and learned to use a form of gentle persuasion. Another side effect of the link was her ability to attack the person's mind by creating pressure from kicking up too many thoughts at once. But the three girls combined powers being used against him, Naruto knew that he was about to be screwed when his chakra pulse fell, giving them an opening to attack. But as soon as he did, a shadow swept over him protectively before pulling him back under its dark grip, breaking Ino's connection with his mind. Shaking the remains of Ino's chakra induced headache away, Naruto turned to Shikamaru and said with a smirk, what took you so long and the boy then said his catchphrase in response, before turning to his lifelong friend Chaoji and nodding. 
It looked as if they had a plan, and by the looks of it, he was going to like it. Creating another with his Junshu chakra, Naruto knew that Sakura had sensed it and turned to Shikamaru, who was hiding with him, nodded which signaled that step one was complete. Turning to Chaoji, Naruto smiled when the larger boy, who surrounded his body with chakra, waited for the girls ready to give them the surprise of their lives. The two boys didn't want to join Naruto's little spar group until they started seeing Ino's progress. The girl was starting to act strange, or at least more strange than usual. She talked of Sasuke less, and she was beginning to nag them less on their material things and more on training. Therefore, Shikamaru's analytical mind couldn't take not knowing anymore and decided to investigate while bringing Chaoji along too. From there they were hooked and stayed ever since. Much to the elder Nara's surprise, Shikamaru actually took his training a step further and asked his father to help him train. The shocked older man couldn't help but nod his head in confirmation before teaching his son some of the finer points of shadow bending. For someone so lazy it was surprising that Shikamaru picked it up quickly and was now able to transport through his shadows and do much more than just make his opponents mimic him when he got a hold of them. Daoji, on the other hand, wasn't too thrilled about working so hard without being able to eat his chips, but after the first few days he got over it. Especially when he started losing some weight and attracting some attention from the opposite sex. The once big bone child was now just a bit bigger than his little friend Shikamaru and had picked a new way to use his family techniques. Instead of bloating his body to increase the strength of his blows, Chaoji took a left from Naruto's chakra shaku. Dejeki and used his chakra to surround his arm in a bloated fist shape, increasing his strength to one even higher than Naruto's. Feeling his start to crumble, Naruto signaled to Shikamaru that the girls had taken the bait, and instead of waiting for Sakura to break that, they had Chaoji come barreling out in his protective cocoon of molded chakra. Instantly recognizing the revised meat tank, the girls jumped out of the way knowing how much damage the rolling ball of chakra could do. Normally a kid, with the exception of Naruto, didn't have the reserves needed to produce enough chakra to support something like that, but ever since Chaoji started training, his reserves were only second to Naruto's. It turned out that the calories he soaked up while eating chips did hold chakra, but now that they were gone, they left his body more room to store chakra without having to burn the calorie. Looking up, Shikamaru mentally patted himself on the back as the plan fell together. Looking at the girl's shadows, lengthened now that the girls had jumped into the air exposing them to more sunlight, Shikamaru connected his shadow with theirs as they approached, capturing them without causing too many injuries. Naruto and Chaoji then moved into the checkmate position, as Shikamaru called it, while Shikamaru struggled to hold the girls. Once done the girls knew that they lost and admitted defeat. Why does this happen every time Ino yelled to no one in particular while stomping the ground? Our strategy was perfect, we attacked and subdued Shikamaru and Chaoji, while Hinata held off Naruto until we could all take him. Why didn't it work Hino yelled. Chaoji, who had taken a liking to the girl, was trying to pacify the infamous Yamanaka temper. Sighing, Ino conceded to the boy's wishes much to his pleasure, but still demanded an explanation which Shikamaru supplied. It was simple. I anticipated your move and we let ourselves be beaten, before coming to Naruto's aid and setting a trap for you. It fit perfectly really, knowing Sakura's natural ability to detect we set it, so that she would come to the we set as bait, and when it was cracking it we attacked, catching you totally off guard Shikamaru said, apparently not seeing Chaoji making signals for him to shut up. Not paying any mind to the growing killing intent coming from the girls, Shikamaru went as far as to say, you know being that predictable will be the death of you but, then realized what a jam he was in. Naruto and Chaoji were long gone, and he was face to face with three pissed off and bloodthirsty Kinoichi. After about 10 minutes, Naruto and Chaoji crept back after the killing intent disappeared. There was an ominous air over an area they had christened Shikamaru's Hollow after their POW comrade. When they entered the clearing, they saw the three girls all sitting intently watching the boy squirm against the ropes that tied him to the tree. As Naruto's Junshu chakra filled the area, the blonde winced when his chakra came in contact with Shikamaru's. From the feel of it, Hinata had closed some of the most painful on the boy's body, and from the far-off look on his face, both boys shuddered as they thought, Sakura's dot moving to help their friend, both boys were surprised that the girls were fine with them helping Shikamaru, instead of trying to stop them, and they wisely kept their mouths shut. After releasing the captive boy, Shikamaru began his recap on what happened, starting with Hinata disabling him before Ino battered his mental defenses, just enough for Sakura to place on his mind. Apparently the mere thought of this reduced the boy to a shivering pile of mush and only increased the fear respect Naruto and Chaoji had for their female training partners. Dismissing the meeting, all parties left to their homes sore. The Ino, Shika, Chaoji trio went the opposite way that Naruto and Hinata went as they all lived on the opposite side of town. After saying his goodbyes to Hinata, Naruto settled at his favorite Raymond stand and ordered a large bowl before thinking about what had happened that day in the past five years. We've grown was all Naruto could think at the time while taking a long slurp of his Raymond. 
the graduation exam is tomorrow, and I know we will all pass Naruto said mentally smiling, but hiding it under his public face. The next day, it had been the same as before. Naruto had had another vision from a place he had never been, but was completely familiar with. This time he had been in a bedroom, much grander than his. The deep crimson bed set complemented gold fox's statues and paintings that decorated the room. As he seemed to fall asleep a knife was placed to his neck. The assailant was a masked female with deeply tanned skin that was covered with short soft black cloth that looked strangely like the ninja gear the more elite females wore. There was a little unheard chit chat between him and the female that no matter how much Naruto tried to hear, he couldn't. And as the mask went in for the kill and Naruto flipped her on her back before unmasking her, and that's where the dream ended. Waking up in a sweat, Naruto looked at his clock and cursed loudly when he saw he was already five minutes late. At school, Iruka had a bad feeling in the pit of his stomach. Naruto had never been this late before, even when he came in with new cuts on his legs and arms that he couldn't hide behind his clothes but still tried to hide them from his classmates. The exam was almost over, and Naruto was nowhere to be seen. After calling his name for the third and last time, Iruka couldn't help but let out a depressed sigh when he was forced to fail Naruto. Then minutes later the boy came in, huffing at his lack of breath. By the looks of his hair, he hadn't taken a proper shower in his rush to get here, and his hair was still wet with bits of soap in it. Shaking himself off, Naruto was about to ask if he could take the exam, but the look on his instructor's face told it all. So here Naruto found himself swinging back and forth on the swing on the academy grounds. He knew he would have passed if he hadn't been late, but the dream had made him sleep through his alarm. Stopping his mental brain when he felt his Junshu chakra going off, he looked at the intruder with slanted eyes. Azuki what does he want Naruto thought to himself, and as if on some sort of cue, the man began explaining how he could graduate. Initially Naruto was suspicious and for good reason, what the Chuanin was suggesting was clearly treason, but Naruto decided if he turned the man in he may get to graduate and a sneak peek at the scroll. A few hours later, Naruto was running through the forest surrounding Konoha and stopped a mile off from where Mizuki originally intended. After cracking the verification code Naruto assumed that his father's blood gave him access to the scroll, and with a shrug, the boy began digging into the scroll. The first technique, Cage Bushin, Shadow Clone, had his name written all over it, and unlike the normal Bunshin, it was direct splitting of his chakra, making it much easier for him to form it, rather than trying to force his chakra into a small place. The second thought was much more appealing. The Teki Kai Inner Release was the name. Not too impressive Naruto thought to himself before he read the description. Releases the inner potential of a shinobi. Not to be confused with the eight inner chakra gates, this release doesn't affect the chakra flow, it just releases the natural inhibitions your body sets through a hypnotic trance. They were the only words written before the scroll went on to the next technique. I guess it's worth a shot Naruto thought to himself while remembering what Sandame said. You are not the Kaiubi and you are not its container. You are the barrier that keeps him from coming back and never forget it. Naruto mentally recited, before going through with the hand seals. Pain erupted through the boy's body as he let out a blood-curdling scream that rang throughout all of Konoha, but even then it didn't drown out the gravel voice's words in his head, who has summoned me and with that, Naruto blacked out. The flock of birds scattering from his right confirmed Naruto's position, and Aruka hoped that he got to the boy in time to stop anyone from exacting revenge against the Kaiubi vessel. Upon his arrival, Iruka let out a sigh when he found out that he was able to beat everyone to the boy, but as he approached Naruto, his shinobi sense was going off. Dodging the hail of kunai from behind, Iruka spun around before catching the shuriken that was about to cleave his head. Gripping the four-bladed shuriken harder, Iruka looked at the smiling face of his assailant. Just Mizuki Iruka thought before something clicked. The Hokage wanted Naruto back alive and judging by his actions, Mizuki was about to bypass that order. Watching his fellow partner stand over the demon child protectively, Mizuki had to bite back a laugh at the irony. You, the child orphaned by the Kaiubi, are going to protect the very thing that took away what meant most to you. That's rich Mizuki cried while laughing. Haruka just ignored the man while stealing himself for a fight. He's not going to kill Naruto, not until I can apologize to him Haruka thought as he watched his assistant teacher calm down from his laughter. My guess you aren't going to step aside so I guess I'll just have to move, you Mizuki said before dashing toward Aruka, his shuriken spinning like a buzzsaw. Letting in a calming breath, Aruka readied himself before dashing forward with his shuriken spinning. Inside Naruto, it hurts all over Naruto thought and to his surprise, his thoughts echoed across the sewer-like room he found himself in. Getting up off of the dank ground, Naruto looked forward and saw the biggest vault he had ever seen. The intricate stone lock had several red and blue pipes coming in and out of it. Letting his eyes fall from the top to bottom, Naruto saw a small opening, like a keyhole for the vault. Around the circular hole were words written in kanji. Here lies the power to damn the world. Scourge all those who live under the torments of Makai and let the world feel the judgment of all those who seek to destroy it. 
However, here also lies the power of a savior, one that will purge the world of all evil and protect those from the impending genocide. Come those who dare to unlock this power and control your destiny, and with that Naruto stopped reading the kanji spiraling around the dark hole. Fear, an emotion Naruto hadn't felt in years, covered the boy and clouded his judgment. This power was more than likely the Kaiubis and the rumbling behind the grand tomb walls only helped confirm that thought. Is this my potential Jiji? To either save all those I love, or damn them. Naruto thought to himself before plunging his arm into the unknown depths of the keyhole. The word spiraling around the hole began to glow crimson before turning into an abyssal black. The grand tomb door began to unlock itself around Naruto's imprisoned left arm. After much movement, the great stone wall slid into the corners of the sower-like room, leaving Naruto's arm unharmed, but that was the least of his worries. Instead of rubbing his sore arm, Naruto's attention was captured by the black chakra that was coming out of the one sealed room like a low-lying fog. Behind a veil of darkness came a ghost pale arm covered in kanji, the same type of kanji that was on the door. Instantly, years of dreams came flooding back into Naruto's mind. Staring at the being that stepped out of the darkness, Naruto was only able to whisper, Shinigami. This being, the Shinigami, was the beast locked within Naruto. It alone controlled the borders between life and death and commanded inhabitants on both sides. Now it was looking Naruto in the eye and telling him, Human, come and see if you are strong enough to take the power Yandane left you during his last moments the Shinigami said before moving towards Naruto. Dodging the swipe from the ghost-like hands of the Shinigami, Naruto instantly flared up his Junshu chakra and tried to land a Kenshiken strike with it, but what seemed like a direct hit turned out to be just a minor distraction for the Death God. Okay, let's try this Naruto thought before activating his chakra Saku. Wrapping the energies around his fist, Naruto dashed at the monster and with a loud war cry, launched his fist into the Shinigami. Instead of blowing back the monster like Naruto thought, the Chakra Shaku. Dejeki would have, the Death Lord simply looked down on the boy whose arm was now stuck inside of him. Returning the favor, the Shinigami pushed his arm through the boy's chest and thus infected his chakra system. Now the true test begins was all Naruto heard before a burning pain shot through his body and all his senses went blank. Ops eyed, this should be over soon Naruto, I promise Aruka thought to himself after hearing Naruto whisper Shinigami, followed by loud moans of agony. The words Death God never sat well with Aruka, especially since it had taken the fourth from the village and sealed a monster inside a child, and now that boy was whispering that in his sleep, before moaning in pain was more than a bad omen for him. Clashing shuriken with shuriken, Aruka knew that it was only a matter of time before he would defeat Mizuki. Jumping back from their deadly game of touch and go as Aruka began to spin his stolen shuriken again and rushed forward to meet Mizuki who was doing the same. Slowing down slightly to avoid Mizuki's attempt to cut his head off, Aruka countered with a downward slash that nicked Mizuki's attacking arm. Following it up with a back leg sidekick, Aruka landed a bone-shattering blow to Mizuki's stomach. Breathing in Aruka never took his eyes off of Mizuki before exhaling a charging forward faster than ever. Mizuki wasn't stupid. He knew that once he lost his element of surprise that Aruka would soon outclass him. This was the reason why he was the assistant sensei and Aruka commanded above him, but Mizuki lacked skill, he made up for in cunning. He knew that Naruto was defenseless and that Aruka would do just about anything in his power to keep the boy safe, so that's why Mizuki sent his shuriken speeding towards Naruto. Everything went according to the criminal's plan, as Aruka's attention was averted to protect Naruto, and Mizuki was able to temporarily escape his imminent death. Throwing his own shuriken, Haruka let out a sigh of relief when he connected with Mizuki's and caused it to swerve away from Naruto. Turning his gaze towards his assistant teacher, Haruka guessed that this was going to be an unarmed battle now. With Naruto, Naruto's Junshu chakra thrashed around wildly, trying to attack the undead creature that was causing its host excoriating pain, but like before, the chakra simply phased through the being leaving it unharmed. Feeling Kaiubi's trap chakra trying to soothe the mind-numbing pain to no avail, Naruto found himself between consciousness and sweet slumber. Whatever this thing was, it was a sadist at heart, leaving Naruto in a constant stream of pain that wasn't enough to knock him out, but just enough to keep each pain receptor howling repeatedly. Pushing through his pain, Naruto flexed his midsection just enough so that he could look the Shinigami in the eyes. The cold black eyes met shining blue, and at that moment, the dead pale skin began to spread through Naruto like an infection. Feeling the welcomed cooling effect the dead chakra was giving, Naruto almost fell asleep, but stopped when he felt something warm on his face. Rubbing his cheek, the boy couldn't find anything, but the warm feeling continued to pool around his cheek, down his face, and successfully distracted the boy from his pain long enough to think. I can't die here. I would let so many people down, so many people that need me to be there and with that images of his friends. Sakura, Ino, Shikamaru, Chaoji, and Hinata flashed through his head before countless others that had in one way or another pushed him to be the person he was today. 
So Naruto gritted his teeth and began to fight the cold hand of death that was now just under his neck. Pushing the invading chakra inward, Naruto compressed it in his chest, and after a few agonizing moments of holding the force there, he heard the Shinigami say, you are worthy, and with that Naruto felt the burning pain stop and a wave of relief wash over him before he blacked out. Ops eyed, Iruka found himself over Naruto, protecting the boy from the shuriken that would have surely killed him. Even though Iruka managed to save Naruto's life, he couldn't help but curse at himself when he realized that they were both doomed now. He was in no condition to continue fighting Mizuki, especially now that the said Chuanin had his favorite weapon back while Iruka was defenseless. Thinking back, Iruka knew this moment was unavoidable. As soon as Mizuki managed to get past him and retrieve both of the shuriken, while well, Iruka was dazed from the cheap shot he landed, and being the underhanded nonsense he was, he threw it at Naruto again. But this time Iruka didn't have one of his own to deflect it with, so there was only one option left. Now watching Mizuki close in on both of their prone and defenseless bodies, Iruka hoped Naruto would forgive him in the afterlife, but fate decided that he wouldn't have to wait until then. Naruto's eyes suddenly snapped open and in a flash he had stopped Mizuki's shuriken in his intensified Junshu chakra field. Looking at the shuriken that seemingly stopped in mid-air, Mizuki first suspected that Iruka had set him up, but from the look on his academy teacher's face, he was as shocked as he was. It wasn't until Naruto said, don't ever attack Iruka-sensei again did Mizuki snap out of his reverie. Just one look into the boy's eyes, and Mizuki knew that this wasn't Naruto that gave a half effort in class or was late to the graduation exam. This boy was the holder of the fiercest Biju Chakra, and by the look in his eyes he was his prey. Clutching his chest, Naruto saw Mizuki tense, expecting a blast from his Chakra Shaku, but what he got was something totally different. Instead of shooting Chakra out of his pentacle, Naruto used his newest technique, Niteki Kai, to unleash a surprising effect. The boy's usual black and blue outfit shifted to a traditional all-black kimono and hakama, but even with the change in clothes, Naruto remained relatively the same until a hole appeared on his chest. The hole decorated with five silver nodes surrounding him laid directly behind his family's pentacle, and the instant Naruto looked down at it, a black chain shot before wrapping around his arm and digging into the ground surrounded by black flames as it touched the ground. More than just a bit unnerved by the demon boy's transformation, Mizuki regained some lost confidence when Naruto fell to one knee, clutching his arm as the chains kept digging into the ground. Readying a second shuriken, Mizuki began to spin the blade like earlier, before taunting Naruto. It seems the demon can't even control his own, and you thought that you could protect that idiot behind you, when you can't even protect yourself and, with that Mizuki made a mad dash for Naruto, his blade buzzing behind him, which was ready to sever the boy's head. However, Naruto was not going to take this all lying down, on the contrary, he stood up with eyes blazing with fury before summoning from the depths of the earth, his sword. Not just any sword, but something inside of Naruto said that this was his blade and more special than anything in this world, it was a dot. Unsheathing his soul cutter, Naruto cut the blades right off of Mizuki's shuriken, before Naruto whipped his chains that were wrapped around his left arm at Mizuki, trying to capture the traitor. After watching Mizuki dodge and his chains cut through a few trees, Naruto stopped before he leveled the whole section of the forest. He stuck his in the ground before making the seal for his other new dot. Had you cage bush and Naruto cried as dozens of clones, all dressed in black with matching, appeared in the area before grinning at Mizuki evilly. It was a long night for the soon-to-be ex-academy sensei. On, Saratobi couldn't help but laugh at Mizuki's predicament when the Anbu brought Naruto, Haruka, and the now lifeless Mizuki back. He had seen it all through his crystal ball, but the real-life version was so much funnier. Drawing his stern face and relieving the Anbu of their duty, Saratobi went through the motions of lecturing Naruto before getting the boy's input on what had happened. Not taken back by the boy's ingenuity and forethought, Saratobi only saw one flaw in Naruto's plan, and that was, So Naruto-kun you may have successfully captured the criminal and saved the village scroll, but why did you have to read the scroll? I'm sure that wasn't needed for you to complete the mission Saratobi asked in a playful tone. Even though Naruto had done the village a good deed, he still needed to remind the boy that he wasn't totally off the hook. He had almost lost his life tampering with a scroll, and now he might have tampered the seal beyond repair. Looking like a deer in front of a cape Naruto quickly put on his smiling idiot mask before explaining his reasons to Sirotobi in hopes that it would help get him out of trouble. You see old man Mizuki would have probably made a run for it as soon as he found out it was a trap, so I needed to make him believe that I really stole the scroll, or he would have just left the village Naruto said, looking the old man in the eye with an idiotic smile on his face. Without even listening to the blonde's explanation, Sirotobi could read, I read the scroll because I needed more all over the blonde's face. Shaking his head, Saratobi let the blonde go with a smile and decided he would get to the bottom of what he had done to Naruto later. Now for my favorite pastime Saratobi thought after he checked for the third time that Naruto and Naruka were out of the building and that he was clear to read his little orange book. 
with Naruto and Iruka. It was late and from the looks of it, Naruto would be taking another year of academy classes with Iruka. Oh well, it won't be too bad this time around, especially without Mizuki team around, and me being pissed at Iruka sensei Naruto thought as Iruka guided him to the Raymond stand. Looking at the Chunin, Naruto nodded his head and dug in. After about five bowls and a hole in Aruka's wallet, the Chunin turned to Naruto nervously and said, Close your eyes. For Naruto, that statement was double loaded, as he had grown up trusting only himself, few others, and the Sandame. But after what Aruka had done for him tonight, Naruto figured that it wouldn't hurt to let down his barriers again. So closing his eyes, Naruto heard some shuffling, and after he heard, open your eyes Naruto was in shock as Aruka handed him his height. I guess I'll see you tomorrow for team assignments Aruka said smiling at the boy who had dropped his idiot mask and gave the man a true smile. Nodding, Naruto tied the height tight before parting ways with Aruka. The next day, the six hours between his late graduation and class was the longest Naruto ever had to wait for something. In the few minutes he got of sleep between the time, he got more and more imagines from the land his body spirit knew, but his mind couldn't remember. It had picked up at a different spot this time, he was still in his extravagant crimson room, but something was off this time. Looking to his side, Naruto saw the ninja who was trying to assassinate him last time he checked, but by the situation they were in Naruto concluded they were more than friendly now. The woman, whose skin was like shining bronze, looked into his eyes with her own cat-like golden eyes of hers. After a few whispers, Naruto's world blackened for a second, and he found himself back in the same room, but the assassin was much different now. Her well-kept jet black hair was now in disarray, and her tight-fitting black linen outfit was cast aside, forgotten at the bedside. Looking at the now female who was crawling towards him with her cat-like eyes focused solely on his, Naruto couldn't help but feel like he, or whoever he was now, was going to be her new chew toy, Naruto's mind blackened again, but unlike the last time he didn't return to his dream, but to the waking world. Looking at his alarm clock, Naruto let out a breath before saying aloud, might as well take a shower now that I have some time before making his way to the shower, hoping that a cold shower would wipe some of the hot sweat and hentai thoughts away. The nice cold shower did the trick, and Naruto didn't have even the slightest hentai thought in his mind. No the boy thought, I just had to take a effing cold shower. I feel like an effing icicle now. Rubbing some feeling back into his legs, Naruto moved to his arms, and after five full minutes of rubbing, Naruto looked down at his left arm that just didn't seem to warm up and saw something that scared him shitless. Coiling up his arm were two chain tattoos, interlocking in an intricate pattern all the way up his arm before stopping at his shoulder, where the two split where each were traveling to the middle of his chest, where the chains had originally started from, one in the front and the other in the back. The sensation much like the one he felt when the Shinigami was trying to kill him scared Naruto into a panic. How am I going to hide this? Forget how am I going to hide this how and I'm going to survive if this thing tries to kill me, again Naruto thought in a frenzy. It had taken him a full 10 minutes for Naruto to calm down enough to rationalize his thoughts, it hasn't killed me yet, so it must be dormant the boy began nodding in approval to his own theory, so if I just wrap it, it shouldn't activate unless and that's when it hit Naruto. The chains only sprang to life when he used Nateki Kai, that must be the key to activating it, and if I stay away from using that, I should be fine Naruto thought as he wrapped his left arm in bandages, Naruto checked twice to make sure they wouldn't come loose before leaving for the academy. On his arrival, Naruto ignored those who questioned why was he here and just shut up the more persistent with a simple point at his height. Looking up at the smug Ichiha who didn't look too thrilled that Naruto had passed, Naruto found that annoying the Ichiha was much more pleasurable, now that he had the arrogant smirk off of his face. Sitting down with Hinata, Shikamaru, and Chaoji, Naruto watched Sakura and Ino fight for a spot by Sasuke with Sakura as the winner. Rolling his eyes when Ino stalked back to sit next to Chaoji, Naruto proceeded to tell them a heavily edited version of how he passed, and now he would be able to join a team with them to kick some enemy Nin and Ichiha, that was until Aruka said. Team 7. Haruno Sakura, Ichiha Sasuke and Yuzumaki Naruto. Naruto didn't know whether to be irritated or relieved. Even though Aruka had said he passed, the man must have been up all night getting Naruto a spot with the graduating class, but couldn't have put him with Hinata or Shikamaru. Hell, he would have settled for Ino, but he just had to get the Ichiha. It's not fair Naruto thought to himself, and as if reading his mind Naruka said, Naruto don't complain. You have the worst scores in the class since technically you failed, but because of uncontrollable events, you have been given permission by the Hokage to pass. Biting his bottom lip, Naruto caught the retorts that were on the edge of his tongue. He didn't want to be teamed up with his rival, not only would the boy be able to see more of his techniques that way, but also the Sharingan, copy we lie, to worry about when it woke up. Figures that the biggest prick in the world gets the Sharingan, and with it access to all my Naruto thought to himself and the injustice done to him. The Sharingan was the pride of the Achiha and their enemy's worst nightmare. One look and all, your plans and your secrets were revealed to the red-eyed nonsenses. 
Turning to Iruka, Naruto sat back down with his friends and waited for the rest of the teams to be called. It seemed fate only hated Naruto as Hinata got Kiba and Shino who Naruto considered good shinobi, but they were a bit unsocial or in Kiba's case too social. As for Shikamaru, he got paired with his lifelong friends Chaoji and Ino. Seeing everyone else in his group happy with whom they were paired with, Naruto's sour mood only sunk lower. Even his best friend and sister, Hinata, couldn't get him to smile. I guess the thought of being paired with Sasuke was too much, even for Naruto's idiot mask to hide Hinata thought before using her trump card. Whispering to Naruto, it's not too bad, we can still train together after team meetings, and besides you have Sakura as your partner Hinata said, hoping that her words would lift his spirits. It was a little known fact that Hinata Naruto had thought Sakura was cute and was a key factor in turning her off to the thoughts of Naruto as a lover and to Naruto as a brother. However, what looked like something to cheer the boy up turned out to have the opposite effect as Naruto retreated further into himself. Sakura is cute, but her infatuation with the Achiha is more than enough reason not to chase her Naruto thought to himself that all the possible outcomes of this team being put together would lead to. On one hand, he would end up beating Sasuke into a coma once he started on his emo trips and successfully getting Sakura to never talk to him again. Smiling at the thought of Sasuke being beaten so badly he couldn't talk, Naruto's conscience piped up saying, but you would lose a friend in the process. Letting out a sigh, Naruto knew his friends were worth more than gold to him, and losing Sakura would be a blow to him, so Naruto just settled for fantasies of him upstaging the Ichiha survivor. Several fantasies later, Naruto wiped away the thoughts of hitting Sasuke where it hurt and came to the conscious world when he noticed that all his friends were gone. Even Hinata, who had been sitting right next to him, was gone, and as any good ninja Naruto felt embarrassed that he had been so far gone that he hadn't noticed that she left or two hours had passed. Taking his eyes off of the clock, Naruto noticed Sakura was still hugging up to Sasuke, and the breeding Ichiha looked as if his patience had worn out. Laughing at the boy's predicament, Naruto figured it was for the best that Sakura liked the Achiha instead of him and decided to celebrate his revelation with a prank on their late teacher. Seeing Naruto's inner child come out, Sakura couldn't help but agree with Naruto when he felt him flare his Junshu chakra subtly before hiding something in its Jinjutsu field. In addition, as if willed by the gods themselves, their incredibly late instructor came into the room with a little orange book in hand. From there everything fell into place. Hidden underneath his Jinjutsu was a bucket of water held by Naruto's chakra, and once the door upon the seal holding the bucket broke, falling on Kakashi's head and soaking him to the bone and ruining his book. Looking at his now ruined copy of Icha Icha Paradise, Kakashi held back his killing intent before speaking out. Your first impression sucks before pointing to the roof and leaving for the stairs. Following Kakashi with a smirk, Naruto was already feeling better, and the thought of having Sasuke on his team was a little more bearable. So why don't you tell me your likes, dislikes, and hobbies Kakashi said, trying to break the ice. His one visible eye was totally focused on them now his favorite book was destroyed. Looking from face to face, Kakashi realized none of them were going to volunteer and decided to go when Sakura said, shouldn't you go first sensei? My name is Hada Kakashi, and my likes are none of your business, my dislikes are things that piss me off, and my hobbies are well, Kakashi said, letting out a pervert giggle after his long pause. It didn't take much for Naruto to piece together that he was a pervert just like most other men Naruto knew outside of the academy. Watching as Kakashi pointed to Sakura saying, ladies first Naruto was interested in hearing what the girl's opinion would be now that she had a taste of what the shinobi life really was like. My name is Haruno Sakura, and my likes are training, and my dislikes are Eno Pig, and my hobbies are working hard enough for a certain someone to notice me Sakura said, giving a pointed look to Sasuke who just ignored the girl's presence. Both Naruto and Kakashi suppressed a sigh before saying to themselves, at least she isn't totally obsessed with Sasuke before Kakashi pointed to the boy in question. With an attitude fitting his coming emo trip Sasuke said, My names is Ichiha Sasuke and my likes are irrelevant, my dislikes are fangirls, and my dream is more of an ambition, and that ambition is to see a certain man dead Sasuke said, effectively killing all the happy thoughts around him and making Kakashi say to himself, Great. The T Nongstat who has an Avenger complex, I should have stayed Anbu before pointing to Naruto, hoping to the gods that he would be at least remotely normal. My name is Yuzumaki Naruto and my likes are my family, dislikes are pricks in general, and my hobby is to better myself to keep all that I hold dear safe Naruto said, dropping his idiot mask and looking Kakashi right in the eye. The experienced Jonin didn't even bat an eyelash, but on the inside he was a bit shocked that someone so young had such cold eyes. Ayubi caused more harm than anyone could imagine Kakashi thought while reminiscing on his dead teammates and sensei. I'll make sure something like that never happens, again Kakashi thought before thinking of the perfect exam to give to his cell. Standing and facing all three of his students, Kakashi said, tomorrow the real test will begin, and if you pass all three of you will be genin, but if you fail it's back to the academy with you earning him the shocked expression he was hoping for. 
the passing rate is 33% and we will start at 8 sharp. And a little hint, I wouldn't eat breakfast if I were you Kakashi said while biting back a giggle. We'll see if the fangirl, the avenger, and the enigma can make the cut the silver-haired Jonin thought before poofing away, leaving his three students to sulk, brood, or look confused. Once the team dispersed, Naruto headed directly for the shopping district of Konoha. The two-hour wait for his sensei made Naruto think back to how he became a genin and what lurked inside his body. The Shinigami was now a part of him, and whether he liked it or not, it wasn't going anywhere. Even though the thought of being a death god scared him senseless, the thought of using a sword wasn't too bad. The only problem was that no one in the village would sell him a sharpened sword, under the thoughts that he would kill them in their sleep. So Naruto was forced to buy a wooden sword and hope that he could find someone to teach him how to use it. However, before he even began thinking of possible teachers, the bottomless pit he called his stomach was calling for food. I'll figure this out later, but for now I need food Naruto said to himself before making his way to his favorite ramen stand. Much to his surprise both Team 8 and Team 10 were there preparing themselves for the next day. Apparently his group wasn't the only group that had to take another exam the next day, and by the looks of it, all of them were nervous. Anata you know you are good enough to pass, and even with Kiba on your team, she no more than makes up for it, so you guys are assured to pass Naruto said to the girl who looked to be reverting to her old unconfident self. Picking fun at Kiba was worth it to see his friend smile again, and with his stomach filled and mission complete, Naruto went home and tried to get some sleep for the upcoming day. Dreams, whoever he was, all Naruto knew was that he was angry. No, furious was more of the word, as Naruto watched his oh-so-familiar body destroy the forest surrounding his old Japanese-style castle under the red sky. The servants were all inside huddled together, hoping that their master wouldn't take his anger out on them, and by the looks of it, they were right to be hiding. Red chakra shot out of his body much like his Junshu chakra, but unlike his chakra, the crimson chakra melted everything it touched, scorching the ground under him. After melting a better part of the forest, a single servant came from behind him. The poor woman was trembling in her shoes and wouldn't even look him in the eye. After a few words were said, the red chakra receded and became what looked like nine long spear-like tails. Naruto felt himself smile and dismissed the girl back to his castle before he felt a smile on his face. For once, Naruto actually heard something from his mute flashbacks. The humans will pay was the solitary phrase Naruto heard before he felt his body shift and change and the world go black. Waking up in a cold sweat, Naruto knew that whatever happened next directly affected all the humans in the world, and for some strange reason he felt that it especially had something to do with Konoha. Looking at his alarm clock, Naruto noticed he had woken up an hour early and decided to take a long shower to rid him of the sweaty smell and try to make sense out of another one of those familiar dreams. With 30 minutes to spare, Naruto couldn't help but make himself breakfast, and by the time he had gotten to the planned meeting area, Naruto had already eaten a good five bowls of ramen. It's cheap, but it gets the job done the boy thought to himself before watching a zombie like Sakura make her appearance. The girl looked like she didn't get any sleep at all, and from the sound of her stomach, she didn't get to eat either. Naruto felt bad for the girl as he said his hellos, but stemmed his guilt with the thoughts that she should be ready for anything. However, when Sasu came in, looking like he could kill a jonin with one look, Naruto couldn't help but find that funny. Serves him right for being such a prick in the academy Naruto said to himself, while quietly snickering at the Achiha, who was now trying to look cool by brooding on the other end of the training field, something that he was horribly failing at now, no thanks to his stomach. Three hours passed and Kakashi broke his record of extreme tardiness by arriving at the training patch at 11 o'clock sharp. Naruto who had been packed full on arrival, had thoroughly digested his food and was ready to go, but his teammates had to settle for a weak glare at the sensei and Sakura yelling, you're late. Looking at his hopeful students, Kakashi noticed that Naruto was the only one that seemed to have life and was showing it by doing some stretches to loosen up for his test. Good it seems at least one of my students can think for themselves. Now let's see if he can think outside of the box Kakashi thought before giving the weak excuse, I got lost on the path of life which only served to infuriate Sakura more. After dispelling a tune in level Jinjutsu from Sakura, Kakashi said, good, but I don't recall telling you that it was okay to start or even give any directions. Looking at the blushing pink haired girl with his now upside down UI, he took out two bells. Kakashi then said, to pass, you each have to retrieve a bell opening his lazy eye fully, showing them that he was serious. A Kakashi sensei, there are only two bells Sakura said, stating the obvious. Looking at the man nervously, Sakura knew that there was something off with the man, and with him dispelling one of her strongest jinjutsu without even blinking, just further confirmed that theory. Well that means one of you is going to go back to the academy, assuming that any of you have enough skill to take a bell from me. I'm setting the timer for noon and by the looks of it, you only have 45 minutes before time is up. 
Hum at me with everything you have and don't even bother if you aren't coming at me with the intent to kill the Cyclopic, Jonin said before throwing Sasuke to the ground at the boy's failed charge attempt. Fortunately for Sasuke, Sakura had picked up the slack and cast another of her best Jinjutsu, while Kakashi was distracted, giving Sasuke a chance to escape with her, before Kakashi decided to do more than hurt the boy's ego. In a flash, the two were hidden in the trees and were watching in surprise, as Naruto hadn't moved an inch, but was standing right in front of Kakashi, with his idiot mask on at full power. Shaking the remnants of the Jinjutsu from his vision, Kakashi looked at Naruto before saying, You're a bit off, aren't you? And here I was thinking that you were the only one who could think for himself. Kakashi said while looking at Naruto before pulling out a brand new limited edition copy of Icha Icha Paradise that he got through a means he didn't want to talk about. I'll leave that to your imagination. As Kakashi predicted, Naruto charged in blind fury, and when Kakashi went in to subdue the boy before spewing a lesson in life, something that the boy would take to heart, Naruto smirked. Well wild leaping attack was just to lower Kakashi's guard, and now that Naruto was close enough the boy unleashed a chakra shaku. Tama. All Kakashi could do was widen his eyes before the blast of chakra engulfed him. Naruto who had just landed was smirking under his idiot mask, before pain erupted between his cheeks. Turning around, Naruto saw Kakashi with a kunai jabbed in him, and then felt an explosion erupt. Sakura couldn't help but wince for her friend as he flew into the air before poofing out of existence. How did Naruto do that? Sakura asked herself when she realized that what Naruto had done wasn't a bushin. Moving from her spot, she realized that she needed to find Sasuke. Not because she wanted to be near her crush, but during a short glimpse of watching Naruto's battle, none of them had any chance of beating Kakashi alone. Meanwhile, Naruto was hidden in a tree near where Kakashi had fought his clone, and thanks to his Junshuu chakra blending with the natural chakra surrounding them, Kakashi had little to no chance of finding him, unless he was looking directly at him. However, that thought alone was comforting as Naruto assessed the situation he and his teammates were in. Shit, even with a clear shot and the element of surprise, I couldn't land a blow on him. At least he used that on the clone instead of me Naruto said to himself before going to find Sakura and, with much less enthusiasm, Sasuke. Am I got a good batch. One is proficient with Jinjutsu, another knows Cage Bushin, and the last is the only surviving Ichiha Kakashi thought to himself as he hid underground, safely away from Sasuke's Katen. Kakaku no Jutsu. After grabbing the Ichiha's legs and pulling him underground, Kakashi began his lecture on looking underneath the underneath when he felt a Jinjutsu fall on him for the third time. She's good, but this is getting tiring Kakashi said to himself before guiding himself through the waves of vertigo and gave Sakura a taste of her own medicine within a second's time. With two students incapacitated, Kakashi bounded off to find his last hiding student, but unknown to him, Naruto was closer than he thought. Humming out of the woods, Naruto made sure he woke Sakura up from her jinjutsu-induced sleep, before approaching Sasuke. Once the girl stopped muttering Sasuke-kun in her sleep and realized whatever Kakashi did was fake, he got her to team up with him. Now time for the hard part Naruto thought to himself before going to the fuming boy who was stuck buried from the neck down. Squatting in front of Sasuke, Naruto started with, I know you don't like me, and for all I care you could burn in hell Naruto started before hearing Sakura gasp. She must think that's blasphemy or something Naruto thought while snickering before continuing, but as you saw from my fight and what position you are currently in, we don't stand a chance fighting him alone Naruto said, leaving the implication that Sasuke picked up on. Looking at Sakura he sent the girl a look saying, what did you think that I was going to do? Come out and say we need your help Sasuke. However, before she could answer Sasuke said, so what are you suggesting Dobe smirking at the boy from his vulnerable position? Naruto had to use all the self-control fibers in his body to resist the growing dark urge to pound Sasuke's face in with a chakra shaku. Dejeki. Instead Naruto just twitched slightly from his newly dubbed nickname, before letting Sakura talk to Sasuke. Sasuke-kun, there is no way that you can beat Kakashi-sensei alone. He's a jonin for a reason, and the only chance we will have is if we team up Sakura said in a gentle voice. Both Naruto and Sasuke were in shock at what just happened, the words no way and Sasuke came out of her mouth without there's anyone hotter than between them. Looking at the girl, Sasuke grumbled before whispering, I'll do it before Naruto already had his hand in the ground and pulled Sasuke up with the help of his chakra shaku. Dejeki. Looking at Sakura, Naruto whispered with a devious grin, okay here's the plan, before dropping Sasuke straight on him. But five minutes left on the clock, Kakashi couldn't help but say to himself, and here I thought this group might pass while reading his little orange book, and just as he was getting to the best part, his maybe students came at him from all angles. Not even looking up from his book, he sidestepped Sakura before making a grab for Sasuke, only to get a handful of air. Injutsu Kakashi thought before adding, but it's not just Sakura's no, this Jinjutsu saturated the area in chakra. Before Kakashi knew it he had fallen into their trap. 
Dispelling the Jinjutsu, Kakashi found it took much more chakra than the last three. Looking around, he saw Naruto holding two bells, and Sasuke had in front of him a copy of his Icha Icha Paradise, while holding his hands in the ready position for another Gakaku. Okay it seems you got the bells Naruto, but now who passes with you Kakashi asked. They have exceeded my expectations, but it's time for the final test the Jonin said to himself before looking intently at Naruto. Meeting his gaze, Naruto smirked while dropping his idiot mask and said, no one, because if only two of us pass we would break up this winning team. Right guys looking at Sakura who nodded happily, and Sasuke, who just smirked at Naruto and with him taking that as a yes, Naruto looked back at Kakashi and said, and besides if you fail us we'll be forced to burn your book. Smiling, his idiot smile at the man, but his eyes telling Kakashi he wasn't lying. Tsuyang Kakashi said, Team 7 passes before turning his now upside down UI, which was staring intently into the little orange book that no one saw him get. First mission begins at 8 sharp were the last things Kakashi said, before disappearing in a plume of smoke, and with a perverted giggle. Turning to his new teammates Naruto said, well seeing as we are now a team maybe we should get to know each other better before leading them to his favorite Raymond stand. 